Imagine wood so formidable that it could withstand the bite of a sword, stand unyielding against centuries of siege and storm, or form the unbreakable bones of the greatest castles ever built. For nearly a thousand years, medieval craftsmen possessed a system almost sacred in its precision that transformed ordinary timber into something nearly indestructible. This isn't merely a tale of old wood weathering the ages. This is the story of a forgotten innovation that literally shaped the rise and fall of empires, that determined the outcome of wars, and that allowed civilizations to construct monuments that still stand in defiance of time itself. Today we are unearthing the forgotten hardening process that changed the world. Welcome back to the Lost Tactician. Stand before the walls of a medieval castle, and you face an impossible question. How did artisans build structures designed to outlast generations, using nothing but timber stone and hand tools? Walk through the hull of a Viking longship recovered from the earth, and you'll find wood so perfectly preserved that the grain still gleams like polished amber despite a thousand years of burial. Visit the Norwegian stave churches, some dating back to 1069 AD, and you'll place your hand on timber that has survived plagues, wars, and countless seasons with barely a whisper of rot. The answer lies not in magic, but in something far more profound, a comprehensive generational understanding of wood itself. Medieval artisans didn't simply build with timber, they partnered with it, coaxed its natural properties toward permanence, and created preservation systems so effective that, honestly, modern science is only now beginning to fully appreciate their sophistication. This wasn't a single discovery, a eureka moment in some workshop. It was a holistic approach, refined across centuries, woven into the very culture of medieval craftsmanship. Yet today, despite its proven efficacy and historical impact, this knowledge remains largely forgotten, eclipsed by industrial alternatives and the relentless modern demand for speed over substance. To understand how medieval craftsmen achieved the impossible, we must first acknowledge the scarcity of written documentation. The artisans of the medieval period rarely committed their methods to parchment. Knowledge was passed hand to hand, generation to generation, through apprenticeship and observation. What we know comes from archaeology, from the surviving structures themselves, from fragmented manuscripts, and from the diligent reconstruction work of modern researchers. The research reveals something remarkable. There was no single secret. Instead, there existed a system, a layered, methodical approach that began long before wood was ever fashioned into beam or weapon. It began in the forest itself with the selection of trees. Medieval craftsmen understood either through intuition refined by generations or through empirical observation, that not all wood was created equal. They sought out old-growth timber, trees that had taken centuries to mature. More importantly, they targeted the heartwood, the dense, durable core rich in natural tannins and antimicrobial compounds that nature itself had designed as a defense against rot and decay. The process began in winter. This wasn't arbitrary. Medieval foresters understood the rhythm of the tree, the seasonal flow of sap. In winter, when the tree lay dormant and the sap had retreated into the roots, the trees were felled. Once felled, the timber entered a phase that modern industry finds almost incomprehensibly patient aging and air drying that stretched across years, sometimes decades. While contemporary practices employ kiln drying to rush wood towards stability in days, medieval craftsmen allowed time itself to do the work. Then came the revelation that truly separated medieval craftsmanship from all that came after the two-stage hardening process. First came charring. 
The exterior of the wood was deliberately burned at low intensity, creating a protective layer of carbon, a technique strikingly similar to the Japanese Shosugi Ban method. This charred skin was naturally resistant to moisture, to the ravages of insects and fungal spores, and to the consuming hunger of fire itself. The second stage involves saturation with natural sealants, primarily linseed oil, rendered from flax seeds, or in Scandinavian shipbuilding, coal tar, creosote, extracted from pine resin. These substances penetrated the pores of the charred wood, soaking deep into the grain, creating a barrier against moisture that could last decades. The wood became a living shield, treated with reverence and patience, armed against time itself. The impact of this hardened wood extended far beyond mere construction. Medieval weaponry depended upon it. Defensive structures relied upon it utterly. Castle gates and palisades formed barriers that could absorb punishment and still perform their function. In daily life, from the timbers of homes to the frames of mills and bridges, hardened wood represented an investment in permanence, in legacy, in the future. Yet today, this knowledge is largely forgotten, not because it was lost, but, you know, because it became economically inconvenient. The medieval methods are time-intensive and honestly resource-demanding. They require old-growth timber, which is increasingly scarce in modern forestry. In the 20th and 21st centuries, chemical treatments arrived, promising speed and convenience, and, well, industry embraced them wholesale. These modern alternatives offered advantages, standardization, scalability, cost efficiency, but at a cost often overlooked. The medieval secret wasn't a magical formula or a single innovation. It was, actually, something more profound, a commitment to understanding wood's nature rather than imposing our will upon it. As we face modern challenges, environmental degradation, resource scarcity, the pressure to build faster and cheaper, there is wisdom in remembering how our ancestors built to last. If you found this exploration of lost knowledge compelling, if you want to understand how history holds lessons for survival, resilience and endurance, then subscribe to The Lost Tactician. Like this video, share it with those who hunger for the wisdom of the past and join our community of people who understand that the greatest victories often belong to those who think in generations rather than quarters. The past is not dead. It is prologue. And in its forgotten practices lies the key to building a more durable future.